No, I didn't join with my video, <laughs> with my audio. <laughs> hello, 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 Facebook. Hello, welcome to Divine Link Classic. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my page. Because I'll be sharing this video on um, on YouTube later. So to my YouTube people, I say thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for always watching our videos, for always sharing our videos. Thank you for being part of the Divinely Classic team. And you know, here we do all things health and fitness. We encourage healthy living. We share Ms. idea. We um, do health education. And my name is Ewaino Saraboy Saibado. I am a registered nurse by profession. I just love to research about healthy living, about healthy food, how to influence our body. I am not a registered dietitian. I am not a registered nutritionist. I am a nurse, an ED nurse, and part of the nursing role is health education, of which I kind of am passionate about. Just do some independent research and share, and hopefully you are learning a thing or two from my videos. Anyway, once again, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for being with us and um, we'll crack on. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen now. Um, just, I just need to know, I need to log into Facebook again. I apologize. I just need to know if people can hear me, if they can see me. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Just give me a thumbs up. Um, how is the family of Mawumi Folasha Day? Hello, darling sister. How are you? Thank you so much for joining. Kindly help us share this video. Kindly help us share, share, share. So we have more people on board. And thank you. I can see some wonderful people here, which um, I, I'm really pleased about. We can see, we can hear. Thank you so much. Ade Banjo, Mary Shew, thank you so much. Um, Omawumi, thank you so much, sister. I'm going to go back now because I see that Facebook can see me. They can hear me. Can you help us share? So we have more people on board. It's really nice when we have more people. Anyway, thank you so much for joining. When I started, uh, um, I think I didn't set my audio. So it wasn't, I was just talking and nobody could hear me. And that's something that I need to work on. I'm going to share my screen now and we will be discussing. I want it to be very interactive, guys. I want it to be very, very interactive. We'll be discussing about um, um, glycemic index, what it means in terms of our diet, in terms of our weight loss. Um, every time we're talking about how food is good or bad for us or how some food are good and or bad for us. Okay, thank you so much. Sorry for that. Just trying to get my screen set up now. Slide show. So we're gonna start from the beginning. Right, so the topic for today is glycemic index in terms of our food. So I'll go through the comments later. I can't log into Facebook now. I'll go through the comments later anyway. In terms of our food, we're talking about glycemic index. And like I said earlier, my name is Ewa Nusaraboy Saibedo, and I am the face behind Divinely Classic. We're passionate about health and fitness. We're passionate about health education. And thank you so much for joining us. So when we talk about glycemic index, what does it mean to you? Is that something that you've heard before? And we're always talking about how some food are bad, some food are good. And this topic, this presentation was actually spawned by um, a, a, a video, was it a video or an article I read yesterday talking about um, carbohydrate food, how bad they are. And it got me thinking, are they really bad? You know, are carbohydrate foods really bad for us? That's something that we need to, to know. And in terms of our body breaking down carbohydrates, um, it, uh, um, it's, it's, here you go, darling. Go on, you can have it. Sorry for that. In terms of our body breaking down carbohydrates, it's how high the, the, the carbohydrate is released as 
energy into our bloodstream. That is what is called glycemic index. So I'm going to carry on sharing my screen again. If you don't know, we do have a shop where we sell um, clothes, um, gym wears, waist belt. I've actually got waist belt on now, but it's very, very good. It doesn't show. It just gives you that packaging, as we call it. We sell waist trainers. We sell male and female jumpers. We sell leggings and loads of gym accessories. Our website is www.divinelyclassic.co.uk. If you're in the UK, visit our website wherever you are. But because we are based in the UK, posting is going to be cheaper for you. So please patronize us. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we are on Instagram, and even on TikTok. Anyway, moving on. Right, a table of contents. We'll be talking about what is glycemic index. And then we discuss what are, uh, you know, high, medium, and low glycemic foods. How do they react in our body? And then we look at the GI charts. And then we look at the physiology of high glycemic food. So basically, when you have this food, what does it really do to your body? And then we'll have quest some questions, and I'd like it to be very interactive, please, guys. And then we'll conclude. And um, I'll try to log into my Facebook, which I can't now. It's a bit difficult for me to log into my Facebook, but I'll try um, so that I can go through the comments. And sorry, I'm just trying to log in. I should have done this earlier, to be honest, but I didn't, which is wrong. So I'm trying to log into my Facebook now, guys, so I can join in as well. I'll be seeing the comments. Okay. I remember, but that's fine. I'll go to the next slide now. Next slide, we're talking about what is glycemic index when we're talking about glycemic index this is a scale that is used to measure how our bodies break down carbohydrates you know we've got different food groups um that we we just call it this we've got different food groups okay and um, but carbohydrates is our body's main source of energy so we get our energy mostly from carbohydrate food and this is going to determine this index is what tells us if this is a high glycemic food or a low glycemic food. And when we say what is glycemic, it's basically blood sugar or glucose. If you break it down, glyce glycemia is blood glucose. Glucose is sugar. You know, when the body converts um, a carbohydrate, it becomes sugar and glucose in our body. That is what is used for energy. So when we're talking about glycemic index, this is the scale of one to 100. Hopefully you can see my screen. One to 100, where we measure how quickly carbohydrate is broken down in our body to be used as glucose. Okay, and this was gotten from NHS 2021. You know, there are different types of food. Some foods can speedily spike up blood glucose. Again, blood glucose is blood sugar, okay? And why other food, other foods like, even though they are carbohydrate food, they tend to release energy slowly, and this will give you a sustained energy. That's why you notice sometimes when you've eaten some food, you've got this, you know, really, puzzling energy inside you know those are high glycemic food and then you have some other food you feel full but it's not like you don't have energy don't get me wrong you do have energy but you haven't got that you know that that buzz you know you actually have a release a slow release of energy which keeps you sustained fuller for longer okay so that's the uh what we mean when we say glycemic index and then there are some food that are very high, there are some food that are very low. I'll go to the next screen. Turn that down, please. I'll go to the next screen. Um, we'll just look at what is high glycemic and what is low glycemic food. And then there's a, a medium glycemic food as well. So that's the middle. So for foods that are high 
um, glycemic food, we're talking about carbohydrate foods that are quickly broken down, like we said earlier, thereby causing a race, not a race, sorry, apologies, thereby causing a race, a rapid, that was meant to be a rapid actually, thereby causing a rapid increase in blood glucose. Okay, so you look at my screen, you can see the pictures that I have there. You can see the high glycemic food. And these are the white bread, the white rice, the white potato, your fizzy drink, your soda, your juice. And sometimes these drinks, they say, oh, they're fruit juice, but trust me, a lot of them are filled with sugar. They are filled with sugar, and that's going to increase your glycemic, uh, um, or rather, that's high in glycemic index, and that's going to increase your blood glucose. Okay. And then the candies, which the kids have. And then you begin to wonder why are some kids very, very active? You know, check it out. Sometimes their diet plays a huge role in the hyperactivity of kids. Kids that tend, even adults, but mostly because we adults, we can control ourselves. But kids that tend to have candy all the time, kids that tend to have soda, juice, fizzy drink all the time, check them out. They tend to be hyper. That's the 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 the, the energy up there because they've had a high glycemic food. You know, um, rice cake. These are things that are high in um, glycemic index. Okay, they've got high sugar. And then on the scale, remember we said the scale is a one to a hundred. So above 50, from 51 upwards to a hundred is high glycemic food. In the middle between 50 and 65 or 70, to be honest, there was no consensus in what is considered a medium GI food. I did a lot of research and I got people or rather articles have a different um, um, number. Some said, 55 to 65 is medium, some said 60 to uh, 75 is a medium, you know, so I just decided to do this my own way. This is high glycemic and a low glycemic food. So under 50 is, or rather are the low glycemic foods, okay? And there the food is slowly broken down, or rather the carbohydrate is slowly broken down into glucose, which our body is going to use, okay? So there's a slow release of energy, like I said earlier, and this will keep you fuller for longer. I don't know if there's anybody that miss whose heart always, always having low GI food. When we talk about low GI food, we're talking about your food rich in fiber, your protein rich food. And look at the screen here. I've got it on the screen, actually. You've got your beans. You know, beans is carbohydrate. I remember when we were younger, we used to think that beans is a protein, but beans actually has more carbohydrates than protein. However, beans is very good because it has other nutrients, a lot of fiber. Okay, so, and it's a low GI food. Again, it has more carbohydrates, but it's a low GI food. Then we've got the whole fruits and your vegetables. These, every food has got carbohydrate. Every food. Just that some tend to have it more than others. You could say fats don't have carbohydrates. Uh, yeah, we could research on that and discuss. I'm happy for people to, you know, go through my video and critically analyze it. Go through and say, oh, she made a mistake here. And you come back and tell me, oh, this, you know, I'm very open to, 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 to um, um, corrections, you know. And it's, it's a process of learning. So you could, like I said, you could argue that, yeah, fats don't have, um, and carbohydrate because I just said food or food have carbohydrate. Anyway, we grew up thinking that even vegetables don't have carbohydrate, but they actually do. Research has shown that vegetables do have carbohydrates, but they have very low carbohydrates that makes them low, or rather put them on the low um, um, table, the low glycemic index. Okay, so we have the whole fruits and the vegetables, unsweetened yogurt high in protein, but they still have carbohydrates, so they are low GI food. And then we've got the nuts. These are the nuts, I just, yeah, these are the nuts. Got carbohydrates, yes, but low GI food, and they are healthy for us. And this food, you know, I, I don't know if you've noticed, when you eat nuts, you, you it, it reduces your craving. I, I, I love nuts these days, because it keeps me fuller for longer, and if you go for the healthy nuts, like your armored nuts, your cashew nuts, your 
um, lots of good nuts out there that's got good fats. They've got lots of nutrients, they've got fiber, they keep you fuller for longer, okay? So that's your low GI food and your high GI food. High GI food, your white bread, your white rice, your white potato, your candy, your sweets and all that. Um, and low GI food, your beans, your nuts, your whole fruits, vegetables, unsweetened yogurts. And there's no way you can talk about um, glycemic index without talking about carbohydrate because basically that is what it is all about. I'm going to go to the next screen now. Go to the next screen so we can see. So remember we said it's, yeah, this is a, a, a picture that I saw which has a, a medium GI. Like I said, there was no consensus about what is the, the, the rate or the number that could be considered as a, a medium GI, so different. But I actually chose this because it's got um, food uh, um, and the, the number where it's they lay on the GI table. Remember, it's one to a hundred that is the glycemic index. So the lower the, the number, the lower the glycemic index. So we're going to look at this screen now. You can see the low GI. For breakfast cereals, um, all bran is got 30 for low GI. Then when you go to high, you see the wheat, the black currant, the brown flakes. Funny, I love brown flakes. I do love brown flakes because they are high in fiber, but they are actually high in GI as well. GI is glycemic index. And that's a question that we'll be asking as we go on. Does that mean that because they are high in glycemic index that they are bad for you? Just have that in your mind and we'll be answering that shortly. Okay, so low GI food, um, um, in terms of your breakfast cereal, you've got your porridge. Porridge is 49 over 100. Okay, that's why I love rolled, um, um, oat brown rolled oats and stuff like that, your porridge really, because they are very, very filling. They are very, very good for you. And compared to rice crepes, they, they, they've got some brands here. I don't know who's done this table anyway, but they, they're branded and this is not very great. The branding that they put there, it's not, um, they shouldn't have done that to be honest. Um, anyway, crispies. Kids love rice crepes, rice bubbles, puffed wheat. These are all filled with sugar. They are all filled. I'm going to go back. Sorry. They are all filled with um, 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 carbohydrates, which is good, but they are high glucose. And you wonder why the kids are always running around. I'm not saying put your kids on a low fat diet, uh, sorry, uh, uh, a low glycemic index diet. That's not what I'm saying, but it, it kind of makes sense when you realize what our kids and even some adults are eating and how it's impacting on their behavior, okay? So on the breakfast table, we have the oats brand on the low side. We've got some medium ones. Wheatabies is on the uh, um, a medium side, or rather in the medium side, it's um, 69 over 100 in terms of how it spikes your blood glucose. And then for your bread, okay, you can see the bread, soya and linseed, 36 over 100, that is pretty low. And this, this, this part now that's got low GI, it has all the things all the nutrients that we need for our overall balanced diet. So I always encourage people, eat whole meal, eat um, 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 food that are not refined. White bread is refined. I do have white bread sometimes. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm a saint. I'm not. But then most times I try to eat my whole meal to you know, eat healthier alternatives of this food. Compare this whole wheat bread which is 49 to a white bread, which is 80. Look at that. Whole wheat is 49. A white bread is 80 over 100. So you can imagine how that's going to increase your blood glucose. Talking about um, um, rice and pasta now, in terms of how they spike our blood glucose, we've got um, egg fettuccine, Spaghetti, again, depending on which one. Macaroni, these are low, uh, uh, a low GI, because then 
I'm not sure about this, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not too sure about the spaghetti because if it's whole meal, yes. But if it's white, um, it's, it's going to raise your blood glucose. The brown rice steamed is 50 and the white rice is 87. They can compare it to your brown bread and your white bread. Okay. Then the rice noodles. Then in the middle, something interesting came up because I like couscous and people do ask me, oh, is it that it's healthier? Uh, why are you eating it? It's got carbohydrates anyway. It's got um, you, your calories anyway. But now it makes sense. It's actually medium GI, like this table has just said. It's medium GI and it's going to make, and I've noticed it makes me fuller for longer. I don't crave food that much when I have my couscous. And a basmati rice, somebody's asked me before that, oh, basmati rice is good for diabetic patient and I wasn't too sure but doing this I realized that it's actually got low GI so it's in that table if you are diabetic it's um, advised that you have basmati rice that's because the body breaks it down slowly the body breaks it down slowly moving on now I'm going to talk about our physiological response to high GI food Again, high GI food are the foods that are high in glycemic, uh, or rather the food that are quickly broken down into sugar and increases our blood glucose. Okay, so how does our body react to it? On this note, I'm going to pause, guys. I'm going to pause and I'll quickly run over to Facebook and see what's happening there. I couldn't log in with my other phone. So I'm just going to pause, guys. Pardon me. Why I dash over to facebook you can see what's happening there just to read the questions Sorry, guys. I don't know if I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I quickly touched the Facebook just to see what's happening there. I don't know if my video is on. Yeah, it is. Um, but I didn't get much, to be honest, because I don't want, I didn't want to keep everybody here waiting. So now we're talking about our physiological response to high GI food. Okay. So high GI food, remember, we're talking about our white rice, our white bread, our potato. Um, what it, ha what it does or what happens is that this food is broken down into blood glucose, into um, energy or um, um, sugar into our body. Okay, In our body, this food is broken down into sugar because that is how our body is going to use it. And when there's that increased, remember, the, the higher the GI of that food, the more blood glucose you are going to have. So this is how our blood glucose affects uh, um, diabetes. We'll be touching on that as we go on. So if you eat something now, say I've just eaten, I had the piece of white bread and there was no, I didn't add any butter. I didn't add any chicken. It's just the white bread. It's going to increase my blood glucose so much. However, if you had that same white bread with protein, that's why they talk about having a varied diet. If you had that same white bread with protein, you had it with some healthy fats, it's going to be broken down slower than it would if you had just the white bread. That is because our bodies tend to break down fat and protein slower than just carbohydrates. Okay, so back to the scenario. I've just had a piece of white toast, nothing added. And now my body is going to change that white bread into glucose because the body needs the glucose for cellular function. And then there's that increased blood glucose. When there's an increased blood glucose, if you can see my screen, that we're at this stage now. 
Then there's what's called the B cells in the pancreas. That's where the insulin is produced. And what does insulin do? Insulin is the shuttle that takes the, the uh, uh, blood or the energy, the glucose from our bloodstream, is going to take it into cells to be used as energy. So insulin shuttles energies into our cells or glucose into our cell to be used as energy, okay? And then when that uh, uh, insulin is secreted, depending on how much or how high your blood, your um, food that you've eaten is in glucose, that's the amount of insulin that will be produced. I don't know if that makes sense. I'll repeat this. If you've had a food that is very high in, uh, in, in glucose, which means it's at the top of the scale of the glycemic index table, your body is going to respond by producing more insulin, okay? And then that insulin is going to drive that glucose into your bloodstream. However, we are at this stage now. Your body is going to produce a lot, a lot, a lot of insulin to, to, to help with the glucose going in. Too much of insulin is going to prohibit or rather inhibit lipolysis. You say, what is lipolysis? That's the breakdown of fats. Okay, now you have insulin on, you know, circulating in the bloodstream. Fats cannot be broken at a time because the body believes, oh yeah, there's insulin that is going to push the glucose into the cell for energy. So too much insulin inhibits lipolysis, which is the breakdown of fats. Okay, that's why uh, um, some time ago I, I, I did a video a year ago, funny enough, somebody commented on that video last week. And there was a one smoothie and one meal a day, which I was doing before. And the person was like, oh, you're breaking your fast with too much um, 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 carbohydrate food. So that means that you're going to have too much insulin. It makes sense now, but when you're doing this, you also have to like, I, I replied to the person and said, calm down, calm down. I know what I'm doing because I'm kind of a limit in how much calorie because in terms of weight loss anyway it's color for me personally i believe it's calories in calories out if you do it this is a bit of a, a, a distraction now but i just wanted to touch on that because it has to do with insulin production as well so when your body produces too much insulin it's going to limit how much fat you are burning because you have a lot of energy that's the uh, lipolysis but back to the story that i was talking about the person said oh you, you're having too much carb now that means you can't burn fat and i said i can because yes i was losing weight at the time i did lose a lot of weight when i done that one smoothie and one meal a day because i just wasn't concentrating on just the uh, uh, insulin spike. I, I was doing a lot of things. I was exercising as well. I was trying to eat a very diet as well. You know, so a lot of things come into place when you are trying to lose weight. However, for the for for this purpose, it's important to uh, mention that insulin inhibits lipolysis. Okay, and again, what insulin does? Remember back to the top. We're talking about how high GI food, how it makes your body respond by producing too much insulin, inhibits lipolysis, and then it stimulates what is called lipogenesis. Lipo is fat, or some people call it lipo, I don't know how to pronounce it, but lipogenesis or lipogenesis, however you want to pr uh, pronounce it, again, too much insulin is going to stimulate it because the insulin that has been released from the pancreas, not used, is going to go into the liver to be stored as fat. So when we're talking about carb is bad for you, carb is bad for you, I think what the area where some people are coming from is because if you eat it too much you're, and you're not using it, you're not using that energy, you're not going for a walk, you're not very active, that fat or rather that carb is going to switch and be stored as fat. That is what happens to our body when we have high glycemic Food. I hope that makes sense. Um, I will move on now. And I'm going to, again, not now, but I'll, when I'm finished, I'll go through all the comments again and respond. So my apologies if I'm not responding to your comments or your questions. I will definitely respond, okay? Back to the 
presentation question. Oh, I was going to make this a question and an answer session, but okay, I'll just show it. How are low GI foods healthier? Does that mean that they are healthier just because they've got low glycemic index, just because they don't spike your energy or rather spike your blood glucose too much? Do you think they are healthier? Not really, folks, not really. Because foods like watermelon and parsnip, according to research, they are high GI food. But then they contain essential nutrients that we need. That's why I am not a fan of restrictive diets. No, I'm not a fan of restrictive diets at all. I tend to have a very diet, but I tend to make healthier choices. I tend to have my whole meal. I tend to eat my veggies as much as I can. I encourage, you know, not being sedentary, you know, but just because a food is low in GI it does not make it healthier. An example is a bag of crisps or a fried chips. If you had a fried chips now and another person had a blood, sorry, a blood glucose, I'm fascinated with blood glucose, and another person had the blood tomatoes, chances are that person is going to have a more raised glucose than you that have had a fried, a bag of crisp or fried chips. That's because, like I mentioned earlier, fats tend to make our bodies absorb glucose slower. So once you've missed that glucose with fat or protein, it's going to kind of reduce its glycemic index. Does that mean it's healthier? No, it doesn't, because chances are it's going to be bad fat, one. Two, the, the amount that you're having as well. You know, that's one thing that I like about this topic. You know, I, I tend to be very objective. I'm not going to say low um, GI foods are the best. I, I can't say that because it's not even, I don't think it's true. There are some low GI foods that are really bad for you. It's all about knowing. That's why I like encouraging people. Don't just listen to people. Go and read. Do your own independent research. What did you learn? After this, now, I would like you to go and read about glycemic index, how it affects your body, how it affects your food. Um, um, and, you know, that way you can manage your weight loss, you can manage your weight maintainers, you can manage your chronic illnesses better with good knowledge. Okay, the next slide. Can I lose weight with low GI food? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because low GI food, gives you that feeling of being fuller for longer. Like I said, when I have my, um, maybe one of these days I have my yogurt in the morning, I've got yogurt, I've got nuts, I've got fruits. Uh, you know, I, 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 I tend to feel fuller. Even when I have my Weetabix, when I have my cereal, but I, I've opted for the, the high fiber ones, I tend to feel fuller because at, at the end of the day, there is a, a, a a lower risk of you increasing your blood glucose when you have um, 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 low GI food, when you have whole wheat food. So yes, if you have low GI food, they can, there's enough evidence to say, yes, you can lose weight with having low GI food. However, not all low GI foods are healthy, like we mentioned earlier. So it's encouraged that you continually have a very diet. Do not stick to one food. If you stick to it, and it's working for you, that's fine. But it's encouraged that you have a varied diet. And then another question is, can it help in controlling diabetes? Again, yes, there is enough evidence to say yes, low GI food can help you control your diabetes. However, you need to consider other factors. Diabetes, you know, the quality of food that you are having matters as well. And the quantity, you know, you can say low GI food and then you have this massive bowl that you're going to have. At the end of the day, it's going to be the same with somebody that's had a little high GI food. So we need to know that. And then again, in, in uh, controlling your diabetes, the variety of food that you're having matters as well. The variety that you are having matters. And then there are general lifestyle changes that you um that you need to do in controlling your diabetes. And also we encourage professional inputs, you know, always go for your head check, always speak to your doctor. If you don't understand something, if you want to visit your GP, if you want to ask questions, always ask questions. If you can research, do your own research, go to um, 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 
uh, credible websites. NHS is very good. I, I always do my research. I use NHS and I use other academic academic articles, I beg your pardon, and it's very good. NHS is a, a credible website where you can get evidence-based uh, um, um, articles to use for your own personal um, um, care, okay? So the next one, yeah, I've got a link. At this point, I'm going to pause again. Sorry, guys, I'm going to pause and just I need to stop sharing actually, because if I don't stop sharing, yeah, if I don't stop sharing, I can't go back to uh, uh, the link. So I'm going to share the link now. I'm going to share the link. Oh, where is it? I'm going to share the link for about this game that I saw earlier, which was talking about, it's it's like a game, and I, I I would like us to play it. Yeah, there it is. So is this and all, this and all. Give me a minute, guys. I'm just trying to share. Okay, and you can join it. Yeah, there it is. Share, and original credit goes to. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, I think you can. Credit goes to University of Sydney's Glycemic Index database. They done this research. So I did it earlier and I got five of my level to tell you that it's good to learn. We're always learning new things. So I'm going to restart and you just answer if you think it's right or wrong. So watermelon raw, is that a high glycemic food or a low glycemic food? We did say that earlier anyway, so I'll click on it. It is a high glycemic food. Watermelon is on the high side, um, 72. And remember we said uh, um, it's uh, on the scale of zero to 100. So they consider low as zero to 50 and then high as 70 to 100. So between 51 and 69 is considered as a medium GI. Moving on, sweet potato baked for 30 minutes, is it high or low glycemic index? It is high glycemic index, but sweet potato is very good. Sweet potato is complex carb. That's what we said earlier. Just because it's high doesn't mean it's bad. Just because the food is high in glycemic index does not mean it's bad. It's got all the nutrients that you need. So carrots, where do you think they are on the scale? Is it high or is it low? Put in the comment section, high or low, high or low, high or low, going, 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 and it's a low. So it's 16. Remember when we said that um, carbo um, our vegetables have carbohydrates, so carrots do have carbohydrates, but they're on the low side, 16, okay? And then your milk, where do you put your milk? Is it high or is it low? Skim milk. So the, it's got like really reduced fat. I would say low. Yes, it's 37 over 100. So your pretzel, where would you put that high or low? We had this on our picture earlier. So I bet we all know this. This is, uh, it is high. Yeah, 80, 80 over 100. And your apple, golden, delicious green apple, is that high or low? I think I said this earlier, it is low, 39. So again, when we're talking about your, um, when we're talking about your vegetables being low glycemic index, you know, that's why we are encouraged to have more fruit, more vegetables, because you are having the good stuff and you have opportunity to have more of them. Okay, so pistachio nut, is it high or low? Our nuts are usually low. And nuts are usually low GI. Oh, your white bread, what do you think? High or low? It's definitely a high because white breads are super high in glucose and sugar, especially when they are refined. Obviously, all white breads are refined. So it's 71. And the next one, grapefruits. Is it high or low? Grapefruit, raw grapefruit, I would say high. 
and I'm wrong. It's actually 26. That's interesting. So it's lower than apple. So you have one grapefruit. You've got lower energy release or slower energy release than when you've had an apple. So instant mashed potato prepared with water. Obviously, mashed potato is high. Yes, mashed potato. Potato is high in um, um, glycemic index or rather in glucose. And then your raisins. Raisins are super high. Yeah. Oh, low. Did I feel, what? what's the rate? 49. Oh, right. I actually failed that. I got nine over 11 this time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that um, game. And if you want the link where you can just go and read, just go and read and do your own. That's the link. It's um, head.clevelandclinic.org, glycemic index. Or you just type glycemic index on your um, search button and you have lots of information you could actually go a bit higher go into google scholar maybe you get some articles there that you can read you can research on i will stop sharing this screen now i'll stop sharing and um yeah i'll stop sharing and i think that's the end of the presentation, just to conclude that following a low GI diet, it may help you lose weight. It may help you manage your diabetes. There's enough research to say you can manage your diabetes with um, low GI, and then it reduces your risk of coronary diseases, your heart disease and all that. However, it's important, very, very important that we also engage in other lifestyle activities that will promote um, a healthy lifestyle. So we shouldn't just stick on one thing to say, oh, that is the way that I want to um, um, lose weight. Okay. We need to like engage in other, other um, activities. I'm trying to get on Facebook now. I just want to go through the questions. And thank you so much, people, for watching. Thank you for joining us. Just want to go to the question. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to go to the, all right. Thank you for the comments. I can see um, low, low, high. Thank you. Ulua Chemical Radio. Thank you so much. Um, oh, oh my God. I've got a star from Festin of Samuelsky. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Um, Hope Lutayo. Thank you so much. Um, Creations with Robin says i have eaten this i apologize for that because i don't know when you said that um so i'm not sure what you meant by that because i wasn't following on facebook which i should have and somebody said i'm on restriction i can't share for now that's fine thank you so much i know you're always sharing thank you so much sister and thank you so much everybody for joining on this live video i do appreciate you so much and hope to see you again soon before then keep sharing please liking please keep commenting um on divinely classic keep sharing our post and have a good good evening thank you so much i'm gonna stop now i'm gonna stop sharing and have a fantastic evening bye bye